My name is Capella Kirst, and I am the founder and CEO of Gecko Materials. Our disruptable technology is the next industrial Velcro, highly reusable and extremely versatile, all while saving energy, time, and money. Hello, my name is Capella Kirst, and I am the founder and CEO of Gecko Materials, the revolutionary bio-inspired dry adhesive company. This is Gecko Materials dry adhesive holding up a full bottle of wine. As you'll note, it falls off under its own weight. Let's pick up some other objects. I got this pomegranate from a neighbor, I did ask. <laughs> Let's place it down. It holds. Again, falls off under its own weight. I have this tomato. Let's see if it, it's a little older. It holds, falls off under its own weight. Those were all curved surfaces. Some of our customers like to pick up an interface with flat surfaces. Cameraman, would you mind zooming in on this? We're going to engage, pick up this glass wafer. You'll notice gecko materials here. There are four sheer tiles. Watch as I turn them off and on. Off, on. You can see how they engage. As I disengage, I take it off. See how quickly and easy that was? Let's head to the slides now so I can tell you exactly what you just saw. Traditionally, to attach two objects, especially two smooth objects, you need glue, tape, or suction. Gecko Materials is none of these. It's not a glue, it's not tape, and it's not suction. It's truly a disruptable tech. Let's see Gecko Materials in action again. This one-inch tile can support 15 pounds vertically. You can attach and detach it over 120,000 times. For reference, Velcro, you can only use 2,000 times. We attach to smooth and micro-smooth surfaces for seconds, days, or even years. Some of our other disruptive properties include 120 kilopascals of sheer strength. Again, that's equivalent to one square inch tile supporting 15 pounds vertically, six one inch tiles pulling a car, or my pinky holding up that full bottle of wine earlier. Clearly, we're very versatile. You can, we are the next industrial Velcro. You can use us in any barometric environment. So here on Earth, you can use us in atmospheric pressure, such as this room a nitrogen box, hydrogen box, or a vacuum chamber. Yes, if you can use us in vacuum, you can use us in deep space. Like I mentioned earlier, you can reuse us over 120,000 times, making this a sustainable solution for our customers. There is no force need to attach nor detach. As you saw earlier, how quickly and easily it took me to grab and attach each of those objects, milliseconds to engage and disengage, leaving no surface residue or marring left behind. So why now? Gecko Materials was spun out of my PhD, which traditionally it took 48 hours to make one single unit. I then developed a mass metal mold and patented it in which we can now make multiple units in under 15 minutes. Gecko Materials holds the exclusive license here on Earth as well as in space for these mass production methods and techniques. We make the same ultra-strong, highly reusable, zero-energy, directional dry adhesive for a variety of use cases. Let's zoom in. Oh, no. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry about that. The slides decide to have their own party. You're just getting a preview of everything. <laughs> Let's zoom in and slow down what you see. For reference, a hair on your head is 100 microns. One one-hundredth of a hair on your head engages with the surface and is pulled in shear to create an extremely strong force, namely the van der Waals force. During disengagement, you'll notice that the wedges also spring back. This mimics the gecko's ability to climb up smooth, vertical surfaces. We are truly the only company that is gecko inspired with micro hairs. They don't use suction, they don't use excretion. Their hairs pulled in shear trick that extremely strong force. Other companies that claim gecko inspired are actually octopus inspired. As you'll see on the right hand side of the screen, they come off one at a time, they fracture, leaving debris behind. You can't use suction in vacuum or in space. We can handle very delicate objects as well, such as quartz, wafers, glass, even solar panels, rotten tomatoes, and eggs. Let's see Gecko uh, materials for one of our customers, this robotic arm. 
So you're going to use a traditional robotic arm and just replace any suction, airline, or vacuum dependencies with Gecko materials, a completely passive, sustainable solution. You're going to rate your gripper to the largest, most mass object, and anything lighter and stronger you can pick up. And yes, on the right-hand side of the screen, that is a rotten tomato and an egg. Because there's no normal force, we can handle very delicate objects. Next slide. Sorry, this clicker is. <laughs> we are the next industrial Velcro, but we are staying very focused on our initial go-to-market strategy, which is threefold. Pick-and-place robots, drones, and space. For pick-and-place automotive and semiconductors, drones, public and private, space, public and private. Because of our disruptable tech and this focus on this go-to-market strategy, we've had the blessings to sell to some really cool customers. Honda, Ford, Toyota, Samsung, Intel, GE, just to name a few, also GM, we heard the CEO speak this morning, was one of our customers. We're currently on the International Space Station as well. We did 727,000 in revenue in 2023. We're on track to doubling our revenue this year. With our current paying customers alone, we will reach 75 million ARR in the next coming years with 88% profit margins. We're currently at 81% profit margins today. We are poised with a small but mighty team that complements my skill set of being a very technical founder. I did my PhD in whole life cycle sustainability, mass production, scaling, and Mark Kakoski is our PhD advisor in which he's the inventor of biomimicry. Wrap it up. We're very excited to save you energy, time, and money. Please stop by our booth and investors. We have a round that we are currently closing, but we have a small allocation left. So we're very excited to partner with you in sustainable innovation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gecko Materials. So I'm gonna put you slightly on the spot because I feel like if I was a judge, I would want to actually try the wine bottle with it. <laughs> is that okay? Is that safe or no? Yeah, it's whatever you can, want. Do you do we want to like maybe hand them the wine bottle if yeah. they can see it, f try it for themselves? Of course. <laughs> so you're gonna place it down on this area. Just pop it down and then twist it over, and it falls off under its own weight. So you twist. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Can you can you talk a little bit about? cycle life, reliability, what the manufacturing process kind of yield looks like? Yes, so my PhD was in whole life cycle sustainability, mass production, scaling. And so the permanent metal molds have millions of cycles. Um, it's a sustainable, we do all of our raw material and source locally, as well as our um, development is also done under one roof. For the life cycle of Gecko materials, it's 120,000. We have had a customer in the semiconductor industry do a 5 million cycle testing, um, in which after one year they will be replacing the gecko materials. Um, they traditionally replace things now every like three months. So again, making our customers save energy, time, and money. You might have just answered this question, but you, uh, during your presentation, you mentioned that you'll be generating annual recurring revenue. Yes. And so what you mean by that is that customers will be purchasing, in, as part of the contract, every single year, some replacement amount slash an upcharged amount of the material. Like, can you walk through the, what the contract typically says for, for when customers pay? Yes, so for pick and place robots in the semiconductor industry are mod automotive industry right now, they replace their grippers just to have their internal QA. They normally do it every three to six months. And so we're actually extending that six months to a year with the paying customers we're seeing now. So again, you're gonna be you're reusing it Again, 120,000 times, but that cycle actually, you know, if you're manufacturing, say, like windshields, you're going through maybe, you know, 200 or 2 million cars. It depends on the type of gripper you're doing and that, that path. And so after a year, we'll just send them new adhesive. So basically what you saw with that wine gripper, we'll send them sheets and they'll integrate that into their arm end effector, similar to this model that I showed you here. Um, they'll just swap out the tiles for new ones. And we'll have like a yearly subscription, which we'll send them new. So you mentioned 81% gross margins. I'd love to understand what the bomb cost looks like to manufacture, and then how do you actually set pricing? Is it relative to alternative solutions? Is it use case by use case? And how do you think about kind of the, the unit economic spread between the two? Yes, yeah, so the bomb and everything that we're looking at, um, the metal mold is relatively cheap, as well as the raw materials that we buy in bulk. So as economy to scale, our costs will 
continually to drive down. And um, how we did our pricing model in my PhD, we did a 2,000 for one unit. And so when I came out in my PhD, I was like, you know what, I want to cut the price and I want to make this more accessible. Um, after doing some customer interviews and some pricing models, we decided a 50% cut, so $1,000 per um, unit, which is 11 square inches. And then from there, we want to eventually not cannibalize our previous paying customers, but we'll roll out different uh, unit lines with different backing materials, things like that. And then we'll lower the price. It's right now, if you were to take a command strip and gecko materials and you were to do 120,000 types, we're fractions of pennies per use. But if you were to use one time, gecko materials one time, the other one time, we're 10 times more expensive. So we're actually, because of its strength, you don't need a lot to do a lot. Like I mentioned, six one-inch tiles can pull a car. And just a quick follow-up question on that. Are you manufacturing domestically or using partners? And how do you kind of keep your trade secrets secret? Yeah, so we make everything under one roof. So my a PhD, I patent some of it, but there's also some trade secrets. And now as a company of Gecko Materials, I developed more trade secrets and improvements, efficiencies, et cetera, that we have built into the plan. And so we do everything under one roof in one house. And then we black box some things even uh, as well. Some of our raw materials that come inside, only certain members of our team know, they black box it and put it on production line. Other questions for Gecko Materials? You spoke a little bit about the sort of the three kind of immediate go-to-market applications from the go-to-market. How, you know, beyond that sort of, talk us through some of the other use cases and, and sort of where you see the growth coming from there. Yes, yeah, so right now we're working with Samsung. I actually had the honor of presenting to the Samsung president and CTO the other day, and he got really excited about doing this in commercial electronics for consumer markets. And so we had a conversation around what that would look like from how many units we would produce and sell to Samsung and the price point, obviously. It's a different ballgame. So eventually, yes, we are going to play in that ballgame of B2C, but right now we're B2B. So um, we do pick and place robots, primarily, again, automotive and semiconductors, because that's where we're seeing the most impact, the most excitement, and really solving pain points and challenges. But then there are other pick-and-place robot lines. Uh, we have numerous customers inbound, uh, so like we have dental and construction. And so the next set that we'll seriously be going after as our second go-to-market strategy will be construction because there's a lot of interest around that. Um, and then even you know um, we have the space industry, ISAM, OSAM, in space servicing, assembly, manufacturing, and then different aspects of that bringing to earth of the assembly, manufacturing, reusability. But there are so many applications within the consumer space that you can make things lightweight, interact. Again, DIY wallpaper is something that's coming soon from a, a customer that's been experimenting with that for a couple of years now. So it's just interesting to see people coming with us. It's the next industrial Velcro. So there's so many ideas. There's things that, but again, these three go to markets, construction next, bio-integrative devices, and then consumer, hey, honey, go to the store, pick up some gecko materials. We ran out of it at home. All right, we are out of time. So give it up for gecko materials. <laughs> So can we keep that? <laughs> Thank you. Good job, thanks. Judges, how was it? Was it cool? Very cool. I, yeah. I can't yeah. wait to stop using command strips. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the consumer application. Right? Oh. <laughs> I'm definitely going to try it later.